So chapter six continued. Still talking about the legislative branch, specifically about the powers that Congress has. So what is a lemon law? A lemon law is when a vehicle that has a defect um, and the dealer has not dealt with within a reasonable number of chances. Uh, for North Carolina, it's four attempts. If, or if the car has been out of service for a total of 20 or more business days in a 12 month period, and then it's covered by a warrant. That is a lemon law. Um, legislative powers, there are enumerated and expressed powers. Um, these are powers that are clearly listed <clears throat> in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. Um, the enumerated powers, again, also called express powers. <clears throat> there are 18 separate clauses enumerating different powers specifically given to Congress. The national government has powers not expressly presented in the Constitution, and these are called the implied powers. Okay, Congress shall have the power to do what is whatever is necessary and proper to carry out the express powers. So powers claimed by Congress because of Clause 18 are also called, again, implied powers. This clause is called the elastic clause because if you think about it, it kind of stretches and encompasses things that um, weren't specifically listed. So it's not, again, not express powers, they're implied powers. And here's some examples. So the creation of the Air Force. It's not written in the Constitution. It falls under the elastic clause because it allows Congress to do this as part of uh, supporting armies. So supporting armies, the Air Force is a support group. Um, so then that's how Congress got to make it. Most of Congress's power involves making laws. Um, so one of the express powers in the Constitution is that Congress has the ability to borrow money. The implied power here is that, um, so since Congress can borrow money, um, the implied power here is that they have the power to maintain the Federal Reserve. The express power of Congress is to raise and support an army and navy. The implied power here is that they have the ability to draft people into the armed services if they need it, um, specifically for like war powers. Okay, they have the power to establish laws of naturalization, which gives the implied power that they have the ability to limit the number of immigrants who enter every year. Again, express power, they have the power to regulate foreign and interstate commerce. <clears throat> the implied power is that they have the ability to prohibit discrimination in restaurants, hotels, and other public accommodations since they have the ability to regulate those things. Now, non-legislative powers, the most important non-legislative power are these two, the checks and balances to check the judicial and the executive branches, and then the other one is to propose amendments to the Constitution. That is really their, their largest non-legislative power. Now, Senate has the power to approve or reject the president's nominees for various offices, such as Supreme Court justices, federal judges, or ambassadors. Um, the House has the sole authority to impeach. This is to accuse officials of misconduct in office. Majority vote in House leads to Senate holding the trial. Acting as jury and deciding guilty or innocent, it requires a two-third majority vote to convict. Now, impeachment has only happened four times in our history. Um, and there have only been three presidents who've been impeached. Andrew Johnson in 1868, Bill Clinton in 1998, Donald Trump in 2019, and then also in 2021. All tried by the Senate, all acquitted, um, which means nobody was removed from office. Uh, side note, Trump's in 2021 is still undergoing, so, but that one's probably going to get acquitted as well. Power limitations. Some, limitation, some limitations are imposed by the Bill of Rights. Um, an example of this, Congress may not pass laws that restrict freedom of speech or ban freedom of religion. Um, Article 1, Congress may not favor one state over another, may not tax interstate commerce or tax exports. Article 1 also forbids Congress from enacting laws that would interfere with the legal rights of individuals. Again, Bill of Rights. Um, Congress cannot suspend the writ of habeas corpus. Basically, it's a court order that tells a prisoner why they're being held. Okay? Um, so if you are arrested, they have to provide you with a reason slash charge of why you are arrested. Um, Congress is also banned from passing bills of attainder or laws that punish a person without a jury trial. So you can't just go to jail and spend forever there without having a trial. Congress may not pass ex post facto laws. These are laws that make an act of a crime after the act has been committed. So, for example, the one that y'all probably been most um, familiar with would be like the change of tobacco and other smoking products from 18 to 21. People who were 18 who were smoking them, it wasn't illegal. They did it two months before the, the law became a law. 
it only becomes legal after the law. So you can't go back and convict people after it was it was legal then. It's illegal now. You can't go back and make it illegal two months before the law became a thing. Constitution reserves many powers for the states. Congress not, cannot interfere with these powers. Um, an example of this is the right to regulate public school systems. Now, there are some checks or limits on the legislative. The Supreme Court declares laws established by Congress as unconstitutional. So if a law passes the legislative branch but does not follow the Constitution, the Supreme Court can check it down. The executive has a check on because the president can veto bills passed by Congress before they come laws. Now, the legislative can also overturn that if they have a two-thirds vote by both houses of Congress, okay. which is really hard. So, that's it.